Welcome everyone to Ability Makers. I'm your host, Reed Saunders. Over the next 30 minutes, we will look at an inclusive, supportive, and passionate community of change makers, belief shifters, barrier breakers, and can doers. I'm here today with Kim Easton, President and CEO of the National Sports Center for the Disabled. The NSCD is Colorado's most comprehensive provider of adaptive outdoor recreation and sports experiences and offers more programs in more places in more ways in order to change more lives. Welcome, Kim. It's great to be here with you. Thanks so much, Reed. Thanks for helping us out today. As you know, 2020 is the National Sports Center for the Disabled's 50th anniversary. Um, from the day back in 1970 when our founder, Hal O'Leary, taught 23 amputees from the Children's Hospital to ski at Winter Park Resort, he started a movement that would eventually transform hundreds of thousands of lives here in Colorado, across the country, and around the world. Although we haven't been able to celebrate our anniversary as we originally planned, not being able to have in-person events and such, we still have a lot of exciting news and stories to share today. For the past five decades, the NSCD has offered exciting, life-changing adaptive sports and outdoor experiences to more than 150,000 children and adults living with a disability. Over the years, the NSCD has grown from not only providing adaptive ski lessons, but now more than 20 adaptive sports and recreation programs offered year-round in the Front Range and in the mountains. It's fantastic. And in fact, the NSCD family, including founder Hal O'Leary, has sent in video messages to help celebrate your 50th anniversary and share just what it is that NSCD does and what it means to them. Uh, so let's hear what they have to say. Rethinkability means to me that no matter what your ability is, you can do anything you set your mind to and really anything is possible. It means looking at the person's ability and seeing what they can do instead of what they can't do. This organization has made me rethink ability by recognizing that we are not all symmetrical, but we are all whole and we're all capable of achieving the same goal. And the way that we can achieve these goals may look different, varying from person to person, but we all have the ability to set those goals and take the steps that we need to get there, even though it looks different. NSCD has helped me rethink my life by giving me confidence in my independence. And NSCD helped me rethink ability by making me focus on my successes and my possibilities. To rethink ability is to have limitless opportunities. To rethink ability is to take a different perspective on what is possible. Uh, working for the National Sports Center for the Disabled has made me rethink the possibilities in adaptive sports. Uh, before made me rethink my ability and what I was doing and as a coach, uh, how to coach everybody a little bit different. So, everyone has the ability to do whatever they set their mind to. created the ability to overcome those things and do great things, including representing their own countries in the Paralympic Games. We rethink ability. That means change, movement, direction. Realize ability is, is so subjective and, uh, and it, nobody can tell you what you can or can't do. Um, but just reframing your story after your trauma or your accident to, to grow is so important. And that's kind of what I think about when I, when I think of rethinkability. I'm reminded of the HK Derryberry quote, which goes, the only disability you can have is a negative attitude. The participants at NSCD are proof that attitude and ability are one and the same. You're able to have the chance to do anything you really want to do. And I really think the National Sports Center for the Disabled does that. They give anybody um, with any disability the opportunity to participate in any activity that they want. And I really think that's important. Yeah. Because and rethinking ability means doing something that seems really challenging or difficult to achieve, but then remembering how much strength you have to overcome those obstacles. I think to rethink ability, it's really an amazing um, thought process that you can go out and do things that you never thought possible. You can really push the boundaries and it doesn't matter what's going on, what um, limitations you might have in life. 
if anything, it's all about your mindset. If you set your mind to something, you go out and want to accomplish a task, you can do that. You uh, can overcome most challenges uh, as long as you have the right mindset, the right attitude. So, Rethinking ability is really what we've been all about all these years. And now we're focusing on it, using a term that it, puts it in a more positive way. We have enabled so many discover that they have the ability to do things they never thought they could do, and we continue to do so. Well, I'm the type of person that never gives up. I never give up. I was absolutely determined after seeing the results of these individuals that were learning to ski and loved it so much, I would never give up on it, never. And, and I know it's going to continue because we have uh, fabulous people at work in the program, work, work with the program, both in Denver and up in Winter Park. So I know it's going to go on forever. from Hal today helps us remember what a truly unique and leading role we've played in redefining adaptive outdoor experiences and helping participants reignite a passion for playing and competing in the great outdoors. For 50 years, we've reinvented adaptive equipment, technology, and coaching methods. And we've always believed that everyone is able and anything is possible. As we head boldly and confidently into the next 50 years, we wanted to make sure that our brand, our logo, messaging, and imagery all help to tell our story with as much energy and excitement as our athletes feel. So for the past 12 months, we've talked to volunteers, participants, competitive athletes, family members, caregivers, board members, staff. We dug deep to learn more about what our programs mean to each of our stakeholders and what it means to be the most unique and successful organization that we can be. So today with their passion and wisdom as our driving force, we are excited, so very excited to unveil both a strong new logo and a renewed bold brand. The National Sports Center for the Disabled logo represents action, movement, passion, drive, fearlessness, determination, and pride. These are all words that our stakeholders use to describe the NSCD during our brand discovery process. The three bold brushstrokes show movement and signifies that we are striking through old perceptions, rethinking ability, and painting a new picture of what is possible. The colors are strong and unexpected, helping us to look as vibrant and as energized as our programs and our participants. The more we spoke to participants and competitive athletes, the more we realized the incredible impact our programs have, not just on what someone can do, but how these activities make them feel about themselves and dream about their futures. Our new headlines show that while somebody may have a disability, it is truly their ability that defines them. You'll notice that by bringing words like autism, MS, and PTSD to the forefront of our messaging, we're also helping people understand the wide range of individuals we serve. Broadening the images and text invites the viewer to understand the full range of experiences and all types of abilities that we do support. This helps our brand story be more engaging and will help us reach more participants and families who will benefit from our programs. We are one of the nation's leading providers of adaptive outdoor recreation experiences, committed to helping individuals with disabilities, their caregivers, and the community rethink ability. At the National Sports Center for the Disabled, everybody is able and anything is possible. I love this new logo. It's strong, it's vibrant, as you mentioned, Kim. It also uh, helps me know and remember your name more quickly instead of simply uh, using the letters NSCD. Uh, it gets me excited about what you all are doing here, and I can only imagine how the National Sports Center for the Disabled has had to rethink just about everything these days. Our Metro reporter, Lucy Guccione, has been working on a story to share um, on how other members of the NSCD family rethink ability. Hi, Lucy. We're excited to hear your heartwarming stories. Thanks, Reed. This is Lucy Guccione, Ability Makers Metro reporter. I got the opportunity today to speak with a longtime NSCD volunteer, a 10 year plus board member, a participant, and his mom. I'm excited to share their stories with you today and the impact that the National Sports Center for the Disabled has had on their lives and how they rethink ability. 
Hi, I'm Paul Hartman. I've been a volunteer for the National Sports Center for the Disabled for 11 years. I first got involved because my daughter joined the ski team and I skied by myself one day and it was like, I've got to do something different. So I remembered back, oh my God, 48 years ago when I was skiing at Winter Park when I was in high school and I, I saw Hal out on the slope skiing with um, amputees and teaching other teaching handicapped people how to ski. And I remembered the program from back when I was in high school and decided that was a great way for me to spend my weekends while my daughter was training with the ski team. In skiing, I have a sit ski instructor, a stand ski instructor, and a visually impaired instructor. And then um, I work at the Bronco Games. I sell the 50-50 raffle tickets. I'm also a professional photographer, so anytime there's a fundraiser or a special event that the uh, National Sports Center for the Disabled puts on, I volunteer and I do the photography at no charge. I've got one young lady, her name was Mora, and um, she came to me, I don't remember how old she was, but it was about four years ago. She'd never skied before in her life. Um, and I had her for five weeks straight, took her on Discovery, took her at, at Sorensen Park first, then Discovery, then eventually down Jack Kendrick. And by the end of the five weeks, she was skiing independently on Jack Kendrick and just loving it. So rethinking ability. Uh, to me, that means finding out where your student's at and setting realistic goals so they can accomplish those goals um, be challenged, but not be so challenged that they fail. Be challenged so they feel that sense of accomplishment and satisfaction. So I first became involved with the NSCD when we moved to Colorado, and on the airplane I had a list of 50 things I wanted to do, and my wife had one. She wanted to volunteer for the NSCD, National Sports Center for the Disabled. And it was an amazing part of our life for 20 years in Colorado. With it. She was a volunteer, and then when I joined Deloitte Consulting, we have been on the board since the founding of um, National Sports Center for the Disabled in 1970, and I was fortunate enough to assume a board seat in 2010, and just recently completed my tenure, um, including being the board chair for two years. Being part of the National Sports Center for the Disabled board has been a tremendously rewarding experience for me, both professionally and personally. Um, personally, it just speaks to so many of the values that I that I have and, you know, enjoying the outdoors, um, seeing power through sport and, and really overcoming barriers that, you know, maybe other people put there, but you didn't put in front of yourself. And I think the NSCD shines a light on that. Um, and an added benefit of the 10 years that I've been involved, I have three um, teenage to 20 year old children and they've grown up seeing the possibility that the National Sports Center of the Table brings people. So tremendously rewarding for me personally as well as um, widening my, my children's perspective and professionally I've probably introduced over 500 people to the National Sports Center for the Sable through events or um, volunteering. Um, Deloitte, Deloitte does a national day of volunteering called Impact Day where we'll have uh, teams come out and work with uh, nonprofits, and every year we do two or three events with the National Sports Center for Disabled. So colleagues of mine have seen disabled people climb and ski and kayak, and it's it's really um, expanded their horizons and expanded what they believe is possible. My favorite experience with the National Sports Center for the Disabled about rethinking ability has been the many times we've gone to the Wells Fargo Cup and I've brought clients and work colleagues and family and friends to be on the race teams and it was never, uh, it, it, it always surprised somebody every year that the fastest racers on the hill may have one leg or may be in a sit ski and the, every two a person walks away from that experience thinking they had false perceptions about limitations and ability and a realization in their own lives that the limits they perceive are ones they put on themselves once people experience the National Sports Center for the Disabled, they want to stay involved. And I know that Deloitte, the National Sports Center for the Disabled Partnership, will continue long into the future. Okay, hi, I'm Debbie Dedrick, and this is my son. See you. Oh, I participated in kayaking, indoor rock climbing, 
and I've also participated in indoor kayaking and, and air rifle shooting and outdoor rock climbing. When participating in the NSCD, I, the goals are to like learn how to um, do it on my own. And, 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 and also another goal is to build friendships. Yeah, make friends. Make friends. Um, try some, some new some, things. Some new some things new in, the, in, the, in the sport or try a new sport. And I rethink ability in terms of never say never. And um, if there are activities that I've thought seen uh, might not ever be able to participate in, I realize that he can with, with you know the instruction that he's like any of them received. And is that how, how do you feel about me thinking about it? Like if I can't do it, then I know I can. Thanks, Lucy. No matter how many times I hear from our participants and volunteers, I still get goosebumps and a little teary. I have to admit. You know, Reed, the NSCD could not serve the number of people that we serve every year if it weren't for our incredible partners. Um, Sky Phelps, the Winter Park Resort president and CEO, joins us today to give a look at what the upcoming ski season is going to look like. Jen Gould, our mountain reporter, recently caught up with Sky at Winter Park Resort. Hey, Jen. Thanks, Kim, and welcome, Sky. I know you're busy getting ready for the ski season. Uh, it's great to see some snow falling in the slopes turning white, so I appreciate your time uh, doing this today. Can you give us an update on what guests can expect at, at Winter Park this season? Sure, Jen, great to be with you today. And as you uh, mentioned, it's snowing outside, so that gets all of our blood pumping and gets us really excited uh, for winter. Pretty much goes without saying that this winter is going to be different uh, with the environment that uh, we're all living under for the last eight months or so. Um, but at the core of that is our is our outdoor skiing and riding experience on the mountain, which we hope will still provide amazing memories and times for for people to get outside and enjoy. Inside, it'll obviously be a little bit different uh, given some of the capacity things that we all have to deal with in, in today's environment. But at the heart of this, it's really about the core of skiing and riding on a mountain and getting everybody to venture out and enjoy what's so special about Winter Park. That's great. How does Winter Park benefit from having the National Sports Center for the Disabled as a partner? Well, first of all, it's been an outstanding partnership for 50 years, uh, which we couldn't be more proud and humbled to be part of. Um, secondly, it provides, uh, you know, access opportunities and possibilities for people living with uh, disabilities to get out and enjoy this mountain environment. And part of that with our ski school and the, the awesome programs in uh, National Sports Center for the Disabled is inclusivity around lessons. Everybody can learn uh, outside and uh, be part of this great sport. So that's what the partnership's all about. And as I said, we couldn't be happier to be uh, partnered uh, with the National Sports Center for the Disabled. It's just awesome. How has partnership between the NSCD and Winter Park Resort made you rethink ability? You know, it's probably a very simple statement. It just, uh, you know, it really gives you the, the view that anything's possible and it shatters a lot of preconceived notions and particularly when you look at some of all the programs, but the competitive programs and the elite races that are held, it's absolutely phenomenal. And I've had the opportunity to actually ride um, up and down um, with some of those uh, competitive athletes. And it's just, it's incredible uh, what they can do and, and the speeds, quite frankly, that some of them go, which uh, scares me myself, but uh, it's amazing. So uh, it's really challenged my own thinking just on what's possible and quite frankly, that anything is possible. Thanks for joining me today. Um, we're all excited to venture out this winter and ski and ride at Winter Park Resort. So from all of us at NSCD, we want to thank you for helping us transform lives every day. Back to you, Reed. Thank you, Jen, and thank you, Sky. Even though uh, we know the mountain will be operating a little differently this year, I can't wait to get back up out on the slopes, as I'm sure most Coloradans and skiers, for that matter, outside of Colorado can't either. Uh, Kim, I know you had to close down your programming um, due to some strange stuff going on this year, you may have heard, uh, back in March, but I'm excited to uh, to hear that you've begun some small group adventures here in the Metro and that the Adaptive Ski Program will be opening in December, which is great. Um, we're going to check back in now with Jen up in Winter Park and Lucy here in Denver. Jen, I hope some of that white gold is falling up your way. Thanks, Reed. I'm here at the National Sports Center for the Disabled at Winter Park. We'll be checking in with some folks here getting ready for the winter. 
Uh, we'll hear from March Petzinger, Adaptive Ski School Program Supervisor, and see what's new at the NSCD Competition Center with Director Eric Peterson and Paralympic gold medalist Andrew Kirka. I understand you provide more than traditional ski and snowboard lessons. Tell us what else is available for a person with a disability to get out on Colorado's mountains. Yeah, so one of my favorite things about the National Sports Center for the Disabled is anyone who comes to us and wants to ski, we're going to figure out a way to get them skiing. So you can see we have a ton of equipment available. We have things like snow goes and ski bikes that allow people to ski independently by and getting some additional support. We have things like bi skis and sliders that allow the instructor to provide some more support. So regardless of what that individual needs, we're going to make adaptations and find the right equipment for them. And we also offer, at Winter Park, we offer a veterans camp every winter. We offer family lessons, so if you have a disability and you want to teach your family how to ski with you out on the hill, a family lesson is perfect for you. We also offer a special Olympics team where we'll set up a race, race gates here on Friday. They can practice running gates. And we have weekly groups enabling people to come up multiple times in a season for an affordable price. And then outside of Winter Park Resort, but still here in Grand County, we offer Nordic lessons and snowshoeing at Devil's Thumb Ranch and Snow Mountain Ranch. So it's a really great way to exercise and stay socially distanced this winter. The National Sports Center for the Disabled is one of the largest and most comprehensive providers of adaptive experiences. How do you all do it? So since our inception, we've always believed that everyone is able and anything is possible. Limits aren't shaped by our disabilities, but our lack of adaptations for them. So our passionate and professionally trained staff and volunteer instructors are really the heart and soul of our program. They are truly masters at adapting and recognizing the unique needs of each of our participants in order to customize that experience to them. How has teaching at the NSCD made you rethink ability? Oh, that's such a great question. Um, I really think back to my first day with the National Sports Center for the Disabled. I was an intern. I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. And I walked into this equipment room, and between the staff and the volunteers and the participants, I had just and all of this adaptive equipment. I had never seen anything like it. Everyone was so determined to figure out how to make the day as successful as possible for their students. And everyone is thinking so creatively and problem solving and working together as a team. And I had never experienced that level of passion and support. And I didn't even really know these people yet. And so every single day that I've been lucky enough to come to work for NSCD, I've felt that same level of passion and that same level of support. And so I think every single lesson that I'm a part of or that I get to see go out on the hill inspires me to rethink ability whether it's someone coming up from Texas and seeing snow for the first time and they're out on the bunny hill and they get those first couple turns in to someone walking, coming in and they want to stand ski and we've only put people with their disability in a sit ski, but we're going to figure out how to get them stand skiing. Like every single day, I am truly inspired by the people around me to rethink ability. It's really amazing to be a part of. Thanks, March. It is so incredible to hear about the many ways that people can get out there and have fun. Now I want to introduce you all to the more competitive side of adaptive sports, the NSCD Competition Center. I'm here today with Eric Peterson, National Sports Center for the Disabled Competition Center Director, and Andrew Kirka, reigning 2018 Paralympic Downhill Champion and Gold Medalist in Pyeongchang. Welcome. Thank you. Andrew, tell us how you started racing. I got started racing when I was probably about 15 years old. I had a physical therapist, took me to the mountain. She was like, hey, look, you are an athletic wrestler, you gotta try this. And so I was like, hmm, okay. You know, I'll give skiing a try. I, it's kind of for pansies, you know, I'm a wrestler, it's a real man sport. Um, turns out, I really like skiing. <laughs> and I decided that, uh, you know, it was only limited by how much I was willing to put into it. And uh, that's what's cool about independent sport. And uh, being part of an independent sport means I can go as far and as fast as I want to, and I can work as hard as I want to to accelerate myself. And so that's why I'm here. 
to work as hard as I can and to move forward and to be the best version of myself that I can be, both on snow and in person. Uh, in an interview after you won the gold medal, uh, you said you have had opportunities to change lives. Can you tell us more about that? You know, the chances to make a difference for people have come in all shapes and sizes. Um, the major one was the chance to be a mentor for you know younger um, athletic skiers and adaptive skiers who really want to excel themselves because you know once you become the best in the world everyone kind of wants to emulate you and uh, so that's been a huge opportunity and then the chance to be a mentor for classroom champions in a lot of different programs throughout the united states um, it's been pretty awesome you know work with under underprivileged youth just around the united states and around the world has been pretty awesome to be an example is is something that's uh, it's kind of elevated me and it feels like uh, what I do here with ski, ra ski racing and skiing in general just kind of gives me more of a purpose. And so that's probably the number one thing. The number two thing is uh, it's given me an opportunity to build my dreams off the snow, a bed and breakfast in Alaska, and a chance to take people with disabilities fishing and hunting and doing cool outdoor activities and uh, like ice climbing, that's another one. And that's something that, that I'm really passionate about as well. And uh, you know, none of these opportunities would be as readily available if it wasn't for the games and if it wasn't for adaptive sport and uh, all these cool opportunities that have come into my life that I've had a chance to take advantage of. Awesome. We're excited to have you join the NSCD this season. Yeah, I'm excited. He's been trying to get me here for years. Eric, you have approximately 25 athletes in the program this season from three different countries. What does it mean to the team to have Andrew training alongside aspiring Paralympic athletes? Uh, thanks, Jen. That's a great question. Um, the one thing that I really like about my program is that we try to provide uh, three components to our program. One of them is staffing, the other one's facility, and the other one is pace. Uh, pace for the program allows uh, younger athletes that are coming to the program being able to look at some of the best skiers in the world. Uh, and Andrew being the reigning Paralympic champion from 2018 in, uh, in uh, Pyeongchang gives the opportunity for some of our athletes to look at the, who the best person in the world is right now and to learn a lot of the, the, the training opportunities uh, to be able to look at him as a skier and then move forward and try to emulate him. So that's one of the, the, the best things that we can have in our program is to have, have, to have that pace. Andrew, you were injured when you were 13. Can you tell us how your attitude or perceptions of ability have changed during your journey? And do you see ability in yourself and others differently now than when you were first injured? Yes. Being injured, um, especially in a life-changing injury like that, you know, it changes your perception. It changes everyone's kind of perception of you. And it, it mostly just changes your perception of the world. So it helps you to see things a bit differently. You know, the Starbucks that you used to go to with the five stairs that get you up and inside, now you have to crawl up those stairs to get your wheelchair up. You know, um, your friends and family that go out and they do these fun hikes and they go out and they do these fun outdoor activities, you can't just go do those with your friends and you can't get out and you can't do things like that anymore. So you have to change your life and you have to change it in so many different ways that a lot of times it can be overwhelming, especially for, for young athletes. But myself, as I've gotten used to Paralympic sport and as I've gotten introduced to NSCD, uh, you know, the National Sports Center for the Disabled, and as I've had a chance to, to kind of progress my life in this fashion, I've learned that everything can be done. Sometimes it just takes a little bit different perspective to get there. You know, we go out and we ski. We ski totally different. And people are like, whoa, what's that? It's something totally different. Yeah, but yet yeah, we're still able to be faster and we're still able to be better than most skiers and most ski racers out there. You know, it just it just takes a, a little bit of a new perspective. And anything in life is like that. You can get over and you can get past and you can overcome anything. You just have to have that little bit of perspective. You have to have that little bit of willingness to work just a little bit harder than everyone else. And that's what this whole place is about. Eric, you began your coaching career with able-bodied racers. How has coaching elite athletes with a variety of disabilities made you rethink ability? So 18 years ago, I came to the National Sports Center to disabled to, to coach. And uh, I walked through locker room door and realized that um, all of a sudden, this is very different. You know? And it challenged me as a coach to be able to, to, to look at the athletes. And in the able-bodied world, uh, you can coach a lot of people like a cookie cutter. You know, you, know, you stamp the cookie out and you, you know, the next one's going to look just the same. This is totally different uh, for the, you know, the world of in disability because 
you know, you, I could be coaching somebody with a visual impairment. I could be coaching somebody that's in the sit ski, or I could be coaching somebody that's skiing on just on one ski. You know, so being able to rethink ability is, you know, a key component to what I do as a coach and being able to look at somebody and see exactly what they need uh, to make them better, um, not only as skiers, but also as uh, good citizens. Thank you for joining us today. We're excited to watch you race this season at Water Park Resort. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jen. It's Lucy here in the Denver metro area. I had the opportunity to speak with Mike Gabinelli earlier today at the National Sports Center for the Disabled Archery Program, and I got to learn more about the outdoor recreation out opportunities we have here in the Denver metro area with the NSCD. Hi, I'm Mike Gabinelli. I'm a program supervisor with the National Sports Center for the Disabled, and we're here today at the Aurora Reservoir doing an outdoor archery program. I joined the NSCD team because I really believe in their mission of, uh, of creating outdoor recreation opportunities for people of all abilities and uh, using those uh, experiences to help the health and well-being of people in, in the whole community. Um, I really feel strongly passionate and attached to the mission that we serve and I really like to be out in the field uh, promoting and spreading all these outdoor recreation opportunities that I also I love so much. Uh, in the metro area, we offer outdoor rock climbing, we offer outdoor paddling, both white water and flat water paddling, a number of different crafts, canoes, stand-up paddle boards, you name it. Uh, we also do obstacle courses, sports clinics, and sh other shooting sports like 10-meter um, uh, air, air rifle. Well, I rethink ability in the way that I always focus on the ability that we all bring to everything we do each and every day. And I leverage that ability to help them be successful at what we are doing, uh, whatever sport that, may, that we might be doing that day. And so for me, I like to think about what we can do and, and, and uh, what we're willing to do. And I try to build on those so that every time I see a participant uh, in any kind of outdoor recreation that we offer, um, I am pushing that ability hopefully to the next level and showing them, showing myself and everybody that I work with that we're all able of more than we, we ever even believe in ourselves. Rethinkability to me, it means keeping an open mind and always trying to look at what we might be able to do at t tomorrow that we weren't able to do today. And really focusing on always setting goals and never setting limits. Awesome story, Lucy. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. In celebration of the National Sports Center for the Disabled's 50th anniversary, Colorado Governor Jared Polis proclaimed November 17th as National Sports Center for the Disabled Day. Here's the proclamation. Whereas for the past 50 years, the National Sports Center for the Disabled has been Colorado's most comprehensive provider of adaptive outdoor recreation and sports experiences since their inception in 1970. And whereas the National Sports Center for the Disabled has been committed to serving all disabilities, regardless of age, race, income, socioeconomic status, disability status, and geographic location. And whereas the National Sports Center for the Disabled is the industry pioneer in adaptive outdoor recreation and sports, turning perceived limitations into unlimited possibilities. And whereas the National Sports Center for the Disabled continues to advance the industry through innovative practices in safety, instruction, and equipment development with academic and industry partners, and whereas the National Sports Center for the Disabled Competition Center draws elite athletes and aspiring Paralympians from across, across the country and the globe, helping individuals at all levels train and compete at an elite world-class level, resulting in approximately 200 athletes competing in 11 Paralympic Winter Games and more than 225 medals won since 1980. And whereas the National Sports Center for the Disabled provides over 18,000 lessons and over 4,000 participants annually, 
And whereas the National Sports Center for the Disabled rethinks ability, redefines what's possible, and fosters a healthier, more equitable society that celebrates each person's abilities and transforms communities. And whereas the National Sports Center for the Disabled believes everybody is able and anything is possible. Therefore, I, Jared Polis, Governor of the State of Colorado, do hereby proclaim November 17, 2020, as National Sports Center for the Disabled Day. As we end this edition of Ability Makers, I want to share one way the National Sports Center for the Disabled is rethinking their fundraising in the coming year. The NSCD will be hosting the Rethinkability Ski Challenge at Winter Park Resort during the month of February 2021. The Rethinkability Ski Challenge engages ski and ride enthusiasts from their traditional flagship event with a socially distanced and exciting way to support the National Sports Center for the Disabled. Teams and individuals will compete to accrue the most vertical feet skiing or riding at Winter Park Resort. Fun contests and challenges will add team bonus points. Final team scores will be tallied from total team vertical feet, bonus points, and the score of your elite athlete in the World Disabled Invitational. You can learn more about the Rethinkability Ski Challenge online at nscd.org. We are really looking forward to this fun event. And like you said, having to adapt and, and come up with new ways to connect with, with all of you. We hope that you sign up and participate in the Ski Challenge this year. This has really been an exciting day, and we hope that you all have enjoyed hearing firsthand the amazing things that have been happening at the National Sports Center for the Disabled. We want to leave you with some insight into what the vision for NSCD is for 2021 and beyond our next 50 years. The focus of our strategic vision for the National Sports Center for the Disabled will be on four main goal areas, transforming lives, transforming communities, transforming the adaptive outdoor recreation industry, and transforming our special organization. To accomplish these goals, we will expand access to adapted programs and experiences, focus on excellent customer experience, improve the health and wellness of participants in the community, create deeper community connections, be the industry leader and innovator, and continue to grow a healthy and effective organization. We hope that you continue to stay involved with the National Sports Center for the Disabled, whether you're a participant, a family member, a volunteer, a community partner, or a sponsor. We can't do this life-changing and critical work without your support. Please visit our website, nscd.org, to see all of this new work in action, to find out about how to get connected to our programs, or simply to make a, do a donation that will help us help all of these amazing people in our community. Thank you, Reed, for being part of this event and this broadcast, and to all of the folks that shared their stories on their videos. And thank you all for tuning in. Have a wonderful day.